Danny, it's our first Facebook Live adventure. And we wanted to talk a bit about some drums and some bass. I know I get emails and questions about some different grooves that we play with the band. Also, you know, some even some local gigs and that whole bit. So uh, we wanted to answer some of that, have some fun. I haven't seen Danny since our last show. He's in Chicago right now. What's up, Danny? Hi, Jules. Hi, everybody. Jules, you're not on your page yet. I'm still, I'm still refreshing. Oh, okay. It should be. Uh... <laughs> I think it's like a minute behind or something like that. Just refresh uh, that thing one more. Time. It should be you up. Sure you're, not, you're not listed on Facebook yet. It'll come up. Let me look here. Yeah. Yeah, we're up. Yeah. I can't. I can't see it on your page yet. I see it on my page. I just went to the page. What's going on here? I don't know. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Oh, here we go. Just for you. Yeah. All right. We're good yeah. now. You have to have it as public, dude. It's public, baby. Yeah. We are live. <laughs> we are. Michelle's over there. She's on the sidelines here. No. All right. So refresh that. Then we should be good. You got it? How do I share a watch party? I just I want to share. I have no idea, dude. Share now, public. Okay. Okay. Got it. Let me just double check it. You know what? I put the light on because I felt like I needed it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We're good. See? Oh, we're up and running. Okay. All right. We sound good. All right, guys, this is our first uh, endeavor, in uncharted waters here with this Facebook Live, but doing something a little different. And with one of my favorite bass players with uh, BOC, and we wanted to make do something educational, right? A little different, you know. All our friends are doing these great, amazing videos, and you know, jamming out and doing their thing, but. We're going in a little different direction here where we're explaining some of the stuff that we play with the band and even not with the band, just grooves in general and what drummers look for in bass players and what bass players look for in drummers. And, you know, I have students that always ask me, you know, they don't really know what they, you know, a bass player wants from them. So what better way than to get one of the best in the world to, uh, to talk about that. So what's up, Danny? How are you? Jules, hi everybody. How are you? How's Chicago doing? Chicago is great. Well, I'm just outside of Chicago. The weather is great. The company is even better. And um, yeah, I'm having having the time of my life here. There, there you go. Right. And we finally broke uh, the weather here today. May turned into spring in a hurry up here in New York. It's been amazing today. So, I mean, it started off cloudy, but it's sunny and warm, and this weekend should look good. So, it's nice here. It was 70 degrees the other day. Awesome. And, um, at least we can kiss winter goodbye. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. So, that'll be good. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're doing a drum and bass thing. We're taking some questions. So if anybody uh, has anything, you can just leave it in the comments and we'll get to all the questions that you have. We, I know I get emails. I'm sure Danny does too about different songs and stuff that we play. One of them that I get all the time asked about is uh, we do a song called Bucks Boogie. Oh, someone's saying that they're having a tough time hearing you, Danny. How's that? Is that you better? Need to turn your my I think mic? that's better. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, turn your mic up. I rarely hear that. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, okay. Donald, 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 Donald want the volume up though. He he's he's done that before. You know, crank oh, it up. Donald? Yeah. Oh, well, he always says I'm too loud. 
Um, he says I'm loud every day. Oh, that's Jimbo. Hi, Jimbo. Jim Jimbo. I know. We missed yeah. the Jimbo. How's that better, guys? Yeah. We can hear you now. Now you're a little too loud, but that's okay. I'd rather you be too loud than not too loud. If I wasn't too loud. Exactly. All right. So we're going to get into the education side on this for sure. And one of the songs that I know I get questions on, and I think you do too, is uh, Buck's Boogie. Yeah. Which, you know, which is a boogie, but, you know, explain it a little bit. What, what, what is it exactly, Danny? I, I think it's a fast Texas shuffle. That, that's how I always look at it. I, I agree. You almost can't feel the shuffle sometimes because it's too fast. Uh, you know, uh, but it underneath it is a, is a Texas shuffle between all the bashing and all that. But we try and keep that, especially Donald's solo section. Um, Jules and I always try and keep it more of a traditional shuffle, just a, a little bit more muscular maybe. Yeah, and, and to... You know, for for you guys out there that don't know what a shuffle is, let me let me throw something up on the screen here, and we are going to talk about some of this stuff. So I don't want to get too crazy, but I do have some students out there. I'm sure Danny does too, and there's some bass players and drummers out there that you know maybe they're just like wait, waiting for the. Right, they said they can't up. hear me again. Is that true? Oh, one second hear you but i don't know jimbo says you're still too low and he would know so crank it up can you crank it up anymore or yeah hold on a second there you go that sounded that sounded better okay so check this out guys this if you look at that, that's some music notes. Some people may know what that is. Some people may not know what that is. But that first, that top line are triplets. And if I played that on a hi hat, and I'll just demonstrate it on the, you know, on the hi hat for you. Those are triplets. Eighth note triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now, if you take out that middle note of the triplet, you have a shuffle. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet. Two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. Okay, so that that's your shuffle. What would you play underneath that, Danny, if you were going to do that? If someone was playing a shuffle. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds really good. Now, to play that beat, to do that, then we have a Texas shuffle. And Danny was mentioning that before. They also, it's a two handed shuffle. You match your right hand and your left hand. They play the same thing and you accent the backbeat on two and four and just play quarter notes with your kick. I wrote a little PDF in the corner there if you can see it. And this is a Texas shuffle. <laughs> So that's basically kind of like the outline or the groove of Buck's Boogie. But that's a basic Texas shuffle. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Chris Layton. Uh, right. from, he played Cold Shot, Pride and Joy. Uh, from a drummer's you know, perspective. Like that. That's more of a traditional Texas shuffle. Like Stevie Ray. Yeah. It was easy top exactly yeah it, 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 exactly and then you were talking about like bob dylan um yeah. you know not social but still that's more of a traditional texas shuffle but that's kind of just the riff of the tune, not really the bass part, but you can see how you can kind of play around the triplet figures. 
if it's the right tempo. So Bucks Boogie being faster than a traditional Texas shuffle limits limits what we can kind of do underneath it. So we just plow through it. Right. And then let me show you what now now what we did when we when we play Bucks Boogie is that we play the um we put the shuffle in with your kick drum with the double bass and that gives it a heavier feel. Let me show you this real quick. Is that what I've been hearing? <laughs> I'm hearing this annoying ticking in my ears for about five years. Oh my God. So that's, a, so instead of playing it like this, we put it in your foot. And when you pick up the speed, For you drummers out there, when I when I play a shuffle, and, and I got this from uh, one of my good buddies and one of the, one of my favorite drummers, John Michelli, when he plays a shuffle, he he plays the first two notes with his right foot, and then start to lead with your left. So then after every beat after that is leading with your left, except for beat one on the first bar. It gives it a nice lope when you're accenting that second note inadvertently with that with your heavier foot. It just gives it a heavier feel. So that's the beat that we play, and I get asked this a lot for Bucks Boogie, and and, and that's it right there. And then what's the bass pattern, Danny? What are you doing there? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. So that so that's basically the vibe to the tune. Um it's a Texas shuffle, but we you know, I play it with my feet and we just get it to swing. It is usually pretty fast. Um, but it's a fun song to play for sure. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, all, all the stuff that we play as a band, they all have these certain little quirks to it, which is pr pretty cool. It keeps it fresh every night for sure. Anyway, it's not like we're just bashing two and four, um, which right. which makes it fun. Yeah, On the yeah, and this is the only really this is the only real, as far as I can remember, the only real stab at a shuffle that they've taken. And it's funny that yeah, they did this very early on. They did. Is this off the first and record? Never, I don't think they've ever done it again. I don't think so. Is this, this is, off the uh, first record? I don't know. We probably shouldn't be asking these questions out loud because they're <laughs> going to know that we don't know the information. We've been in the band 20 years, so we don't really know. The I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then I, 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 <laughs> I thought it was I a don't Black Sabbath cover. <laughs> Um, I do want to talk about um, two more shuffles that are pretty cool. And and you brought this up once. You were playing with Simon Kirk from Bad Company. You did some stuff with him? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, Bonham made it really, really popular. It's, it's sort of like an English shuffle where the bass drum and the hi-hat are matched together. And it just, it's a really heavy, heavy tune. And believe it or not, that is still a very, very, very hard um, thing to play. Because it's slower too. It's slower and it's and it's 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 slow and funky and sleazy and but it's got to sit in the pocket and that was what like you shook me the zeppelin too. right which is really more like a Chicago thing you know like a muddy waters thing but 
but they just play it so heavy, you know, the way Bonham and like Son Kirk would play something like that would be would be a lot heavier than the traditional way. But basically the focus is the same, I think. Right. Well well I think okay, so I it is. I think a lot of shuffle and put a triplet thing on it, which gives it a whole different It gives it a, I, we can't really play together because of the latency issue here, but you know, hopefully in some future things we can. But when you add that triplet thing on the hi-hat, it lightens the whole groove up and it takes away from that real, real heaviness, the, you know, the, that English kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, is Buck watching? Buck no, he's not watching. Me. He's sending us oh. some other, some other files. <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was correct. That's on box buggy. <laughs> he probably will. He'll probably the first thing he says when we get back on to a sound check. Um, yeah. And I'll oh, I love it. Not knowing the words of Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually fun to play. Uh, Richie did a great job on that. That was a lot of fun. That Zilla lockdown. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, um, and then so those are some shuffles and then there's one more shuffle that we could talk about too it's the um it's sort of like a, a um a halftime shuffle where you uh check this out for you drummers out there Where we'll put, check this out. We'll put a note inside of the triplet. So this isn't a heavy thing. This is more like Steely Dan. I'm getting an echo from you. Is that for me yeah. or what's going on? Could be me. I'm hearing an echo. Okay. All right, so check it out. So we were doing shuffles where it was just... This one, I'm putting in a snare drum in between the shuffle. Like Steely Dan reeling in the ears. And that became pretty popular. You know, Jeff Beccaro made that popular. Right. And then, and then from that kind of thing, and then we'll get off this subject of shuffles, is when you can get into that halftime kind of thing, like Fool in the Rain or, or something like that. And that looks like this. I'll put, I'll put it like this. And then from there, you know, yeah, exactly. And then from there, you know, Bernard Purdy made it popular, Jeff Beccaro, you know, so you can get some... you know, and blah, blah, blah. But that's a little history of the shuffle. And it's fun to play one, even if it's a double bass, Texas, boogie, shuffle. It's it's still fun to play. And uh, for you guys out there, definitely a groove to know. I mean, you, you want to... I know for me, as a drummer, what I like to hear in a bass player, I want the bass player to swing. I, it doesn't need to be a rigid feel. There needs to be a little swagger, a little swing, little Jumanji, as you say. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like you know, my to me, an example of that is like Levon Helm. He's probably my favorite drummer of all time. Everything he does 
has that underneath. Doesn't matter. There's something exactly. going on all the time. Exactly. Him as like, you know, one of the best or the best rock drummer because he swung. You know, Who? He, Bono. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that guy. Right. Yeah, that guy. You know. <laughs> but it, and it, I think if you go over this kind of stuff and you play some of these things, you can get some really. Uh, it'll help you playing the straighter stuff for sure. You know, getting a, yeah, a handle everything, on it. Everything will be it'll be as straight as it needs to be, but it's got to move a little bit. Like Bonham, even when he played like Black Dog or Rock and Roll, there's something going on underneath that's not doesn't sound like it's a grid, so to speak. Right. And, and and I think another reason, too, like you can play, you don't need to be on the grid like perfectly in time. You can play behind the beat and ahead of the beat mm -hmm. and still still sound great. But I think a, a key factor with that, too, is that, you know, you need to play in time with yourself, especially for a drummer where your your feet, your legs need to be in total unison with your hands. Right. And then when that go. No, go ahead. No, I was, I was going to say that I think if when you ha when you play in time with yourself, then if you're on, you know, when you're playing and you're a little behind the beat, but it's together, it's going to swing. Even if you're ahead of the beat a little bit, that's OK, too. As long as you're in time with yourself, it'll feel good. Right. And also within a song, if you're playing something like that or maybe the house is rocking, whatever, a lot of the Sun record stuff, depending on who the instrument is this person may be swinging more than rocking or vice versa. And maybe the piano player is playing more straight on the beat. Maybe the bass player is swinging more and yet it still makes, it still makes a sound collectively. Well, well, you, well you go to the first, uh, you know, Chuck Berry, Johnny be good where the drummer is playing like a, a shuffle kind of thing and the band's playing straight, but it works. Little Richard like that too. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. And and I think, of course, and, and even, you know, then when you get into the Beatles with Ringo, how he, he, he has a little, that's, he plays in between that eighth note and that, you know, that swing feel and it's, and it's magical, even if you're not. Yeah, I saw her standing there. It sounds to me like Ringo is swinging and McCartney's playing, you know, playing eighth notes. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's amazing yeah, how it yeah. just, it, you know, obviously, you know, yeah. one of the, you know, the best band of all time. So, you know, for, for your kids out there, or even, you know, guys that are, you know, getting into it, you know, shuffles are real important. And, and you know, one of the ones that we do uh, or the only one that we do at the moment is the uh, is Bucks Boogie, which is fun. Especially if you're playing double bass, so I've gotten Especially some emails. a bass solo in it too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I've gotten some questions on that. What am I doing? And I don't know with if Albert played exactly a double bass shuffle per se, um, but that's what I'm doing on that. So I don't even did he play double bass? I don't know. I gotta ask him. I could text him. We need, we need to start <laughs> learning more about the history of this band. <laughs> it's just only my 16th year oh my goodness when did Ozzy <laughs> leave this band <laughs> when did you when did you when was your first year with the band because uh, you were august of 95 and you were with them for about a decade or so or and just then you about. just about yeah wow there seems to be a nine-year limit so um, i i went way past that i was in october of 04 really yeah that's right because i left i left a week before you came in yeah me and richie you uh, were coming so i split <laughs> i don't blame you <laughs> oh man but you know what too going back to to boc i mean just the the drummers and bass players that they've had in that band are pretty incredible i mean i walked in richie was playing bass which is great and then when he switched over to guitar we got rudy sarzo so i mean that's that's she don't you know yeah exactly i mean you're not getting any better than rudy sarzo and then when he left the band uh buddy chasm joined and you know how great is chasm i mean so for me uh, in a selfish kind of way i got to play with like some of the best place bass players in the world which is like you know that was that was fun and they all had a different feel but it all worked 
you know, everyone has a, a, a different who's more laid back, who pushes ahead. Everyone's tone is different, but everyone is still amazingly great, which is, you know, important. Yeah. And then you got, you know, all the drummers that you played with in the band, you know, Michelli, Rondinelli. I mean, come on. Those are two. Bergie. Yeah. All of those guys. How crazy is that? Every name has a vowel at the end. You have to. That that's the Long Island way, you know. (laughs) Did you ever wants to know uh, what am I playing? You mean what bass am I playing or what am I doing with myself? Oh, okay. I could. You, I could, you know what? I, I'll you get know that. What? Hold on. An hour. I get that. So, De- oh. Derek Spence, Danny, what are you playing today? This is my Jack Cassidy Epiphone bass that I love. I've had it for about ten years, and I've had the same strings on it for ten years, by the way. And um, they're old flat wounds, and I've been using this almost entirely for the last couple of months. For I've been doing a lot of acoustic music. And this goes great with acoustic guitars and piano and Rhodes. And um, it just sa- it just sounds great. It records great. And um, I've been using it for almost every recording I've done. And I've been doing a lot lately since we've been isolated. And uh, so this has been my, my main go-to thing. So I just did a session the other night for a guy in Las Vegas. And I use this. So far, no complaints. There you go. I got someone, uh, Mark Ray, asked me, Jules, when you're playing, are you counting it out in your head or are you just feeling the groove? I, I, I'm not counting it out in my head. Um, actually, I'm feeling the quarter note pulse, to be honest with you. I think that's what a lot of people, maybe if you're learning something really complex for the first time, you want to count it out just to understand where everything lays out on the grid. But yeah. after that, you want to make it feel good to a, to a quarter note pulse and that's what i'm doing yeah if you guys have any other questions um derek said what base is that did it, is that yeah oh yeah I just, what I, I just went through that epiphone jack cassidy i highly recommend it this is based on a, an old um gibson made a bass called the les paul signature bass which is what jack was using um for a while and there were some things he wanted to improve on it. So he designed a custom low impedance pickup and a three-way variable um, voltage or resistance. I don't know. Three knobs. One knob with one knob with three buttons. And um, it's just big and bad. And it's one of those things that even with the tone rolled all the way down, it's just got a really great big swampy tone and then with the treble all the way up it's just a really great guitar and it's it's almost like an ampeg b15 that it may not sound all that exciting or interesting when you hear it by yourself but when you fit it in with a mix it just it just squeezes in perfectly <clears throat> i did a track with with george cintron the other day uh i can't remember what i did um Oh, uh, Stevie Wonder, my Sharia Moore. And I was using a P bass and I just, I just couldn't get it to speak. And I sat with it for an hour. Then I picked this up on the first take and it just sat in great because it was an acoustic based version of the song, acoustic guitars and stuff, no electrics and no heavy drums. So, uh, I don't know how this would work for hard rock. It's probably all right, but it sounds, it sounds great from here. Thanks. Thanks. I love it. And it's gold. It's beautiful. And I, I just, I really love it. Uh, Billy Mac, Billy Mac's in the house. He wanted to know if you played with uh, John O'Reilly. Yes, John's that's a, right. He did another great, he... another great drummer. He's with TSO. Yeah. Uh, John O'Reilly uh, came on when Chuck Berge left to go play with Rainbow. So I played with John. I also did a bunch of records with him up in Millbrook. He's a great drummer. He's one take O'Reilly. He, I've never seen him do a second take of anything. There you go. As opposed to me, who's there all day. But, <laughs> you know, Danny two good. times. Yeah. I got to go do the take. Do the take. Yeah, good take. Take, take, <laughs> take, him, back with, take him back with ravioli. <laughs> and Sam Stout's in the house. What's up, Sam? Hope all is hey, well. Sammy, Sammy um, 
hosted us when we recorded the record and had gr- the best menus in uh, in uh, in Westchester, as far as I can say. Yeah. Mexican food. And- yeah, we miss we miss Sam. Hopefully, we get to see him soon for sure. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, <laughs> not that important. <laughs> All right, Buck the Boogie wasn't on the first uh, record. Someone's saying, Bo- Oh, the guitar is oh, right, the world. All right, well, there's your history. So, thank you, Frank. All right. I'll go I'll Frank look. Doris and my neighbor. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's cool. Well, you learn something every day. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I wish his answer would have included the lyrics to Godzilla so I could finally learn it correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that's why you know, I used to sing the whole song with the guys. But I just couldn't remember all the words, so I figured he'd learn the words and don't sing. So I took the second choice. <laughs> oh, are there any other song? I know uh, there's another tune that you know, getting off, you know, the uh, shuffle thing. There's another tune that guys ask me about is "Shooting Shark," and that has a pretty cool bass part too. Yeah, you know that's Randy Jackson, right? Not from Zebra. I- yeah, um, not, not from, another. Yeah, from a uh, well, he played. He played with Journey back in the day, didn't he? He played with Journey. He played. He did a lot of sessions. Played with Aretha Franklin, uh, Mariah. He was Mariah Carey's MD for a long time, and um, and also Kenny yeah. Arrington did some sessions too. He played on Perfect Water. He played on quite a few things i think the record they did with tommy price was i think yeah. tommy price played perfect water right am i right on that I think no. it was him and kenny aronson that's yeah, a they, hell of a rhythm track. it doesn't I mean, any better than that too no they they i you know when you look back i mean boc really had some amazing rhythm sections it's yeah, it's pretty wild you know <laughs> i'm waiting for a comment from you <laughs> yeah, what they used to have such good sections. What the hell happened to them? So, what can you do? There, there you go. We try. We try. You know. But um, yeah, shooting shark. Play that bass line because that's a really funky and slap. So with flat wounds, that's not going to happen. So I'll play the notes. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. That's that's kind of it. You're in the ballpark. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> here, here, here's. I, I wrote out the drum part that it's. I think it was done with a. Um, I think he programmed it to be honest with you on the I record. I think that's a Lin machine, right? Yeah, I think I think it was a Lin machine, and so you know, kind of took a little bit of what that's doing and put your own element in i years ago you did a trio thing with you michelli and and don and and um michelli played a really cool groove and this is similar to that yeah Yeah. is that for chuck sadie or something or no that that was for uh that was for um i forget the the guy the the boy's name he was fighting cancer um wow my memory escapes me um all right uh, well, I saw the, I, I I saw the D, the DVD of it. Or, I, or, I, or Don played me a cop. You know, when I first joined the band back in the day. Yeah, that was a cool gig. Yeah, and and the groove that the the band you know the song morphed into was kind of like this. And it's a fun groove to play every night. It's. Yeah, exactly. And it really locks in tight with the um why do people keep saying you want it louder? Uh oh yeah. Oh yeah, Ricky Browning. I apologize. Ricky Browning was that brave boy who um who was going through hell, so we went down to make him feel better. And and we did. Because Godzilla, Godzilla was his hero, so Oh, that's uh, cool. Played, played a show that, for him. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. But um yeah. So, um, but yeah, the, 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 
that that concert you guys played was great and 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 Michelli's part on, on shark was was really stellar so i take a, a bit of that and then of what the you know the lin machine thing and then it morphs into kind of a real syncopated rhythm there and it works well with, with the bass yeah, and people it's a really unusual unusual approach for blues to cult to take with a with a song like that and it's not it, they're not trying to like make a rock disco single even though there's slapping and all going on it was just it was rock. It was just a different kind of rock. Very cool. Yeah, that, that that goes back to the point of, you know, we we don't really do a lot of things where it's just, you know, two and four, and boom, ba, boom, ba. There's this every they, song they has something going very easily. They, and they get yeah. bored with traditional arrangements, too. Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely, you know, to learn a, a BOC tune or learn a few of them is, is no easy task for sure. No, no, we're still learning. <laughs> I mean, if we if sometimes we'll go back to the original record or whatever, or Donald will say, you know, you know, he did that with um with OD. Was it he played the demo on bass and he was showing me what he played. And I go, wow, that's really cool. I like that better. But you know, still learn, still go it always always helps to go back to um to the drawing board and just listen to it again and refresh it because Sometimes it, things get so beyond. Yeah, even get... yeah, it, even like um, I remember just this past in the last few months, ETI didn't we change up a little bit of the uh, verse where he wanted it to, to swing a little bit more, as yeah. opposed, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm being asked to speak a little louder. This, this is a first in my entire life, but I'll do it. Um. No, yeah, he changed it. He wanted to swing the verse a little bit, but yet not slowing it down. Right. It's not, it's not easy to do that, but he Donald hears things very differently than everybody else. And that's that's the beauty about it. And he's able to explain it, which is also easy. Right. It's one thing yeah, no, it, it, ideas, but he, you gotta be able to communicate them and he does. He does, absolutely. And that you know, well, he's great. You know, <laughs> he's great. He's a great MD. He's great. Well, he's a great creator. Part of the thing about being a real musical director is being able to explain yourself in a language that everyone can understand, so you can get them to transmit your 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 thoughts and your ideas. Yeah, I mean, how many situations have we been in? I know I've been in a few where the guys are just trying to tell me what's going on or try to get their thoughts to you, and they just there's a lack of communication or the the language that they're using just you know not picking up with that yeah like i want it to sound more yellow you know yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> i need more purple during yeah, that chorus purple. section you know what change your dealer you'll be like <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah uh, somebody exactly. billy billy mac says uh do you play behind danny on the bass solo like you, d you used to do with rudy i didn't know rudy had a bass solo yeah back in in the day, I you uh, we used to do solos after like Godzilla. Um, they do a bass thing, and what Rudy was cool oh, yeah, that's right. is we that we would that go through we kept festivals. Yeah, yeah. What happens is we're not do if we weren't doing a, a like a real fan show per se, um, or if we were doing a big festival and you get a sixty minute, sixty five minute slot. You know, everyone would rather hear a song than, you know, bass and drums. So that was kind of one way. Maybe they'll, yeah. maybe they'll come back in 2021. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. usually. <laughs> don't, don't hold your breath. We'll see. Yeah. I no, actually it's like all right. it better. It's... I like it better. I mean, for me, I like, I like playing, making music with Donald than just sitting up, up front by myself. I kind of. Oh, absolutely. It yeah well yeah no it's fun and i and i play behind you guys you know i'm i'm not i don't just totally fade out yeah i mean right before i completely block you out in my head i know that you are playing <laughs> that's before the first note of the of the night usually right? <laughs> yeah oh my god this is hilarious any other song that you uh that people call you about or ask you about they asked me about dominance. They asked me that about last time. Um, 
dominance is pretty straight ahead. But if you want, you because we can't play at the same time, guys. We're waiting. We're waiting for someone to invent the software to do it, or buy us really good computers so we can do it. Or, so, or when you're back in New York, you just come here and you know, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, keep the, old, the, the old-fashioned way. You know, ten feet apart, we'll be fine. The old-fashioned way. Yeah. yeah when all. We'll, We'll when are you co- when are you coming back to New York? Anytime soon? Are you going to be in? Yeah, pretty soon. But you know, I'll, I just got here about a week ago. So. Oh, okay. You'll be there for a month. Keep going back and forth, and um, and you know, I'll be back. You were talking about. Uh, you said, "Oh, not that Randy Jackson from Zebra," and it reminded me of a story. Um, I love we Randy just, Jackson. How great are they? I mean, Guy Gelso sounds better every better year. Than ever. Better, better we're, than ever. Yeah. Remember we we played with them on the on the cruise when was that like two years ago? Yeah, the Rock Legends cruise. That's right. Yeah. How how much fun was that seeing those guys again? Amazing. They played Rock Candy, the old Montrose tune. I'm a big Zebra fan. I I lived on um on Long Island in between Cheers and Hammerheads, which were the two biggest places that they played at one point. I guess. I could walk to either place, so I would sneak in with my fake ID and see Zebra, and see Rat Race Choir, and Twist. Well, I didn't. No, I never saw Twisted really. Um, we we so, got someone from Norway looking in. That's pretty cool. Oh, cool! Hi, Rune. Right on. Um, when I was in, I was still a senior in high school, playing with like you know the my rock band in in you know in, in the garage, and Zebra was was playing Sundance back in the day and we went to go see him sold out show and we couldn't even get in the park you remember the old Sundance and what was that Bayshore yeah right and just jam-packed and I just remember thinking man I just want to play in a band as big as Zebra because <laughs> that was like they were the band they were back the, then. No matter where they that played, was the band that was and not only in the tri-state area they were always big down south and because they're originally from new orleans and they still yeah. play down there too. and randy i think randy's still down there because he was doing a bunch of solo gigs is it is it i think guy's down there too well guy lives down there but yeah randy, randy was playing down there when when everything came to a screeching halt so i believe he's still down there and um <sighs> Randy does a Facebook Live thing just about every day, folks. So it's it's a real gift. Come check him out. We're, we're going to check him out tonight, I think, right? Yeah, we're going to check him out tonight. My good buddy Randy, he'll do a zebra, a gig of all zebra stuff, maybe all Beatles, maybe all Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. He's a walking We'll have to check that out. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. And he's spot on, and he's a good friend of mine, and he's one of the funniest dudes you'd ever want to meet. And there you Definitely go. Definitely funny than me and Jules. I mean, we're <laughs> funny, but we're rude. Randy's funny and nice. No, Randy is just, he's, he's a sweetheart of a guy, too. He was, uh, he was just so receptive and nice to my son and, and my wife, Heather, on the, on the, you know, on the cruise. It was just great. Yeah, he's great. He, he was awesome. He was awesome. He was awesome. There's a bunch of Long Island guys that are doing, you know, shows on you know tell judas does one mike on saturdays which is yeah. amazing george centron does one every wednesday night centron do, does one every wednesday we got a two night that's right he's yeah. great he's another great one i mean there's some serious you know growing up on long island we were pretty lucky to play with you know some amazing players you know i mean even all the, we all know of all the drummers out here, you know, they all end in a vowel from Bellucci to Michelli to Rondinelli, Sorrentino, Franco, Franco, Franco yeah, Macaluso. yeah, Macaluso. Yeah, you know what, Mac, he's over in, I think he's in Europe still. He's been there for he years lives in Italy. Yeah, he I, I spoke to him about a year and a half ago. He's great. He he's was amazing. Yeah, all those guys. I mean. And it's funny how we're all, <laughs> it all ends in a vowel, but it's cool. Yeah, Although my, it started, it probably all started with Carmine. He started the, vowel. yeah, exactly. Although my friend Chris Marshak is a rock and drummer. He, we'll have to give him a vowel or somewhere along the way. Make him but, European. We'll put an E on the end of it. There you go. <laughs> and then the bass players too. Lenny, you know, there's some great bass players on Long Island as well. Local guys, Lenny Rossillo, another Italian, you know, Dave Marsh. 
we'll put a we'll give him a vowel as well but yeah. you know the deal that's right uh, um for drummers what my students ask me you know what is a bass player looking for out of me so as you being you know what are you looking for in a drummer I, I look for uh, for a job. besides good besides good looks and you know besides and, good looks and a, a big fancy car driving around <laughs> yeah. and giving up the window seat that's you know right. for you that's right you know other than that that's right you did give up a window seat thank you very much oh uh, thanks next time when we fly in the next five years I'll give you give up my seat to you yeah yeah okay I'll look for, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, I look for you know ears gotta gotta listen good sense of time and you know i mean there's two there's two parts of the time you want someone to bully too like drummer especially has to bully the time sometimes when things when things need you know when somebody needs to drive and also i like when a drummer is willing to just ride on somebody else if there's a guitar player playing an extended solo or if the bass player in my case or anybody else's case is changing the groove like if you listen to the Allman Brothers in one minute the drummers are driving the next minute it's Greg on organ the next minute maybe it's Barry Oakley or whatever Dwayne is doing he's going off into another direction and the band just just rides with him got to be able to shift gears like that I mean, especially bands that jam like that you know m those are my favorite bands whether it's Cream or The Police right. or, or even Purple and Zeppelin, obviously it's all about how it gels when they're listening to it because you can't jam if you're not really tuned in. Well, it's, it, it's all about the listening. I think even you know what I look for in a bass player, the number one thing is to listen. You guys can play the parts perfect, but if they just have the blinders on and they're yeah. just doing their thing, yeah. And then I yeah. feel it, you know, that's you can have all the chops and all the talent in the world. But if you're not listening, you know, you, yeah. you, you're not. Yeah. It's all about communication. That's what music is. You're just communicating yeah. with one another. And that and listening is the. Bars, you're right about that. If you go down to bars like the 55 bar in the city, like I've seen like Adam Nussbaum play with. I just saw I just saw Stern there before right before this uh, whole thing happened. I, I went and saw Stern with Richie Morales and and this guy Edmund Gilmore on bass. Okay. okay. Trio, Mike Stern, these crazy cats. There's like six people in the bar, in yeah. and you know, well, that's what New York City is all about. And it was yeah, just nine steps. Yeah. And, yeah, and mind and blowing. Mind blowing. And the thing is, but if you see Adam Nussbaum three weeks in a row with maybe three different bass players. He may tune his kick drum differently. He may play the same song he played last week differently because of the bass player's sound and groove. You know, you have to, you, there's only so much real estate tone wise and groove wise to go around. Like I know people have told me that guitar players are rolled off bottom end because I have a, a deep full, you know, pretty full bass sound. Right. So they kind of shave it back and, you know, take take give a little real estate back and therefore they own the mid-range a little more or something so if you're playing with uh, a bass player who's playing really mid-rangey not a lot of bottom end you might want that big fat bass drum and if he's playing busy like jocko or whatever you might want you might want to tune into that and kind of play around it and adjust your playing so i'm sure jules plays differently with me than he did with rudy or chasm or anybody else and and the same goes with me. And it's just, uh, it's not compromise. It's just, that's how you make your music. You have to listen to each other. That's right. And the whole picture. And everyone's, you know, as you get older, especially your personality comes out and you're playing and, and everyone's personality is a little different than someone else. So it's, you know, don't for you, you, you know, your students out there, don't take it as a knock that someone's doing something different with you than with somebody else. They're just yeah. making the gig. They're listening and they're just making the gig a little bit better, that's you know, for everybody. That's yeah, how, that's how exactly. Exactly. And it's all good. It's all good. And that's we got Christian. The guys in the band. I'm sorry to interrupt. But Donald, Donald loves that. Donald would never say play like the last guy. He from day one, he just said, do what you want to do. You know, he knows that we're musical and we're not going to step on toes for the most part. <laughs> No, but and no, older and wiser. Yeah. yeah, but we have ears and we're listening, you know, and, and he wants you to play like Danny. You know, he wants me to play like Jules. He's like, you know, Bobby was amazing, but 
you play like jewels and yeah and and that's what makes it cool yeah you know and, and you know what's cool about uh don is that he he has that jazz mentality where he wants it different every night like you don't have to play the same thing which is like Donald is very much a jazz musician even though he doesn't play jazz yeah he thinks like a jazz musician he thinks like a jazz like a like a like a jazz leader like how miles would think or 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 coltrane not to say that his music is the same but he thinks in that terminology all the time instead of changing I, bands he just changes gears yeah exactly and that's uh, you know that's why i think you can be in the band for so long and it's still so fresh yeah which is like yeah. you know yeah, amazing is, looking to see who the hell is playing in his band <laughs> We have a, a guy. Uh, who is it? Um, it's Christian from Italy. Christian from Turin, Italy. Yeah, we know oh, Christian. Man. I hope you guys. Home I hope you guys are doing all right out there, Christian. I I don't think we're gonna make it out there this year, but hey, you never know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, you guys you are know. well. We may be neighbors soon, Christian. Yeah, I wanted to mention too. You don't have to, but if you feel like you are uh, getting anything out of this, we do have a little PayPal set up for. If you felt like throwing something in the pot, no big deal. Either way, we're doing this for fun. But, you know, Little Scott all never hurt anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, Christian's a great fan. He, I think he went to a bunch of our shows over there in Europe, for sure. Oh, really? Thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, okay, Liz. Hi, Liz. She still says I'm too low. Hi, Liz. Miss what, you. Love you. Where, love you where's Nev? Nev? Where's Nev? Is he drinking yet? He's yeah, got to be. Probably, probably hiding behind the couch. <laughs> he's screaming at the dogs right hey, now. Hey, Liz, tell him this. Tell him to say that. <laughs> Neville was our is our uh, was our bus tour bus driver for years and years in England. Yeah. Yeah. He he is the yes. best. The Nev best. Neville is the best people. The best people from Yorkshire. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We spent Boy, a lot this... of time with them last year. We went for Alpha Curry. We, were you were you with us when we went to that horrible bar? We, I don't know if that I, horrible heavy metal I don't know if I, bar. I don't know Actually, if I went to that. Probably watching. The, what? I was terrible. I don't think I don't terrible. think Maybe I went to that. There. It was <laughs> Why was it terrible? Like CB CBGBs look like the Mandalay Bay compared to this. <laughs> it was that sticky, huh? Have you played? C I I played CBs back. What a crazy little club that was! Great sound system, really was great. Yeah, Miles, we answered that question about Danny's bass. So uh, just rewind this tape. And the Jack Cassidy it. Epiphone bass. Yes, one of my heroes, Jack Cassidy. <laughs> so you were saying uh, another song that people ask you about is dominance and submission yeah yeah and what you know what are they asking you about that song well they just asked me to play a little bit of it last time when i did my uh my online thing so oh, i want to okay. play the drum beat and then i'll play well I'll the, play. the beat the beat to that is pretty straight <laughs> Basically, the groove to the song. Right. Now, that may not be exactly what's on the record, but when I came into the band, that's how they were doing it. So it's one of the cool, uh, many cool things about the guys in the band. Like this is the way it's done today. Sometimes it, you go back to the original record, but songs evolve. Absolutely. Especially when they've been doing it for, you know, 40 some odd years, they yeah, definitely yeah. evolve. And, and regardless of the players too. I mean, if the Bouchard brothers were still in the band, it would still have, have evolved 
you know absolutely just, you know, just, yeah just doing it with other guys now yeah yeah no I, oh, do i throw in bass chords i always throw in bass chords i play more chords than any of the guitar players in the band most of the time <laughs> but I, I, can play. I just think it sounds pretty heavy and it kind of give you the illusion sometimes that you're also going an octave underneath because of the overtones and and all that scientific stuff but Sometimes it sounds like if I play this, the C double stop. Sometimes you could swear there's a low C underneath there too, bouncing along along the guitar player's chords. But I like to play chords because I think it's heavy, and um, you know, depending on what those what these guys are playing, if it's single line or whatever, it just sounds so heavy. You know, the way the airplane did it with Cassidy, or you know, um, Chris Squire does it, did it all the time. Uh, King's X, of course. It just sounds heavy. Just got to be careful not to go too low. You know? Yeah. And then, you know, Motorhead, of course, all chords on bass. Any insider yeah. info you can give on the uh, B, uh, VOC album? No. <laughs> uh, that's a no. <laughs> Thanks, John. No. It'll it'll be out soon, and we hope you'll like it. But you know, everything is different now. Every everybody's moving stuff, gigs, releases, everything. So um, yeah, this, crazy time. Uh, yeah, I hope no, we, I I'm, I'm I'm hoping that we we get to do we we have a a deep purple run in October in all of England, which I'm hoping that happens. Yeah. We do, and we have a birthday to celebrate that week, and everything. And it's. It'd be a very important week in the UK. <laughs> oh, it's it's gonna be. <laughs> is it Michelle's birthday? Yes, it is. Oh, <laughs> and it's my birthday in March too, which we haven't oh, that, been able to celebrate. So, you know, I I think the entire summer should celebrate my birthday. We could do that. I can. Well, yeah. you've you've been celebrating since January for your birthday, so you know, pretty you know. much have. Yeah. Yeah. Have. I, I, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I see people putting up. But yeah. So anyway, well, we hope we, we hope you guys can hear us or see us. You know, we we've never used this uh, this mechanism before, so it's kind of. Yeah, I hope it is. I hope it's okay. I mean, doubt. We're looking to do more of this if you guys are into it, and then hopefully we can suss it out where we can play together, and then you can hear how the grooves work and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, that, that's our next step. We're doing the best we can here, but we're willing to suss out anything you guys want to hear. We'll take we'll take any song apart, you know, and uh, we'll all learn together. Yeah, I mean that that's the fun thing, especially now too when everyone is home. I mean, you definitely can. You know, play some, pick up an instrument yeah. and start playing, or just yeah, hone your craft for sure. Have you been playing a lot on in Chicago? Yeah, I've been playing and doing something every day here, recording something for some. I've been doing this Turbo Tribeca stuff, my friends down in out in New York City, and we've just been pumping out a lot of music. And um, check that out, Turbo Tribeca Music Community on Facebook and uh, George, Do you George Cintron involved with it. Chris Campion, oh. who you know. Oh yeah, oh Chris is the best. He's a madman. Have you um? Let me see. Do you have a website? I'll put my website up if you guys want to. Uh... No, I don't. I just I would just go to my Facebook page, guys. Um, go to his Facebook page. That's my website, and then we both have YouTube channels. So if you want to go to that and subscribe, this will be on it. And a um, bunch of other yeah. educational things and that whole bit. So, yeah, you know, it's good just to get the word out. And I think Richie's doing a, a live broadcast on Sunday. So, obviously, all you BOC fans are into that. So, that's really, really cool. Cool. So, that was a quick hour, man. Yeah, it was nice. That was fun. That was nice. I think we hope you guys had fun. You know, again, um, feel free to give us um, to give us uh, word as to you know what things may may or may not sound good and what you'd like to hear in the future. You know, it's it's open ended. We'll 
we'll do whatever you guys want to do. You know, we just, we miss playing together, Jules and I. So we're just figuring out the best way that we can make some music. And we like playing music and talking about music and discussing it with other people. And so uh, we figure what better thing to do it in a public forum and involve all of you guys out there too. So absolutely. And I did mention well, something. I did mention something about pizza. Do you, do you like the Chicago deep dish, Danny, or the New York style? I, I like the Chicago deep dish. I'm always, I'm always, you know, more biased to the New York pizza, of course. Right. But, and because and we're all we're all New Yorkers deep down. Were you on the yeah, gig when we, we, we played in Staten Island and Richie brought like five pies from five different pizza places? And we had no, like no, a, I, no, I, we had a we had a pizza man. off and we were picking out, you know, who had the yeah. best pizza. Yeah. My there was favorite the, is Nunzio, Nunzio's in Staten Island. Yeah. Oh, well, is, is that which is the place that we go to every time we if we have a show down in Maryland or Pennsylvania, we got to drop Richie off. We oh. stop at a. We usually stop. Is it at Brothers or something? We usually stop at a pizza place at like one in the that morning. Place, in it Staten looks like Island. we're about to get mugged. Oh yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> We don't know if we're gonna find all four tires, but it, it's when sketchy. But that pizza is pretty good. The pizza is really good. Yeah, and also, you ever go to Little Vincent's in Huntington? Oh, years and There's years ago. And honey, they're open till like two in the morning, and they're really. It's right on, right in downtown Huntington. And it's really great. I used to have a. There was a pizza place. Remember, we, we used, there was a local uh, restaurant bar that Danny and I and even Richie played. And we used to do a Wednesday night jam there called Painters. Oh, yeah. And um, remember the pizza place Ragtime that was right next to it? Uh, no. The best connected pizza. To it? No, it wasn't connected, connected to, to it. it. No, it was about a quarter mile down the road. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You remember Ragtime? Yeah. And I, they since retired, but I still, we still have pizza frozen in our fridge from, you know, four or five years ago when they closed. The best, though. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't eat it, but I miss it. Oh, Billy, Billy Max yeah, saying little Vincent, to, Billy Vincent, uh, little Vincent and Ron Cockham is open till four. Right. That's on Portion Road. And the other one in Huntington is actually really good. Um, and it actually it is it is really good and they're open late and it's proper pizza there's a place in know? in patcho called donatina's i think ridiculous yeah. well Off tonight is the pizza chain. night here i'm i'm we're making our own homemade pizzas tonight oh there you go and then you're listening to uh randy jackson right we're gonna listen to randy jackson because nothing says randy jackson like pizza there you go i like it that's right Danny, I had fun. I hope you did. I had fun, Jules, and I had fun, guys. We miss you all. Uh, in all seriousness, we miss playing for everybody. Um, we miss being out there and making people happy because you make us happy. And, uh, and I mean that, you know, the, when we travel all day and uh, there's sometimes not a lot to smile about, then we get to play our instruments and play some great music and um, put a smile on people's faces. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's what everybody's trying to do. So yeah, after this and, is all over, if there's any silver lining when um, this mess is over, uh, I think everybody will realize that how important music, live music was to uh, getting everybody through it. I mean, you can watch Netflix and HBO and Showtime and listen to your favorite records, of course. But this type of thing that's happening, whether it's Randy playing or your local guy or Dave Grohl, whatever um think about wh how much harder this would be without that well so, said well said that's maybe a, maybe maybe the arts will get a, a second look and we'll realize like europe has long figured it out how important it is to the dna of human beings and how much it's we everything on it. don't give it a dollar sign or a number or a title it's just part of who we are it's 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 everything so yeah, ab absolutely. Right. Yeah, and that's yeah. well put. And uh, yeah, there you go. You can't say anything after right. that. And that's, wine you know. too, because if you're really loaded on wine <laughs> and listening to music, everything is better. Much. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna make guitars at yeah. pizza dough. Well, it's happy hour. Um, some it's happy hour somewhere. So we'll let everyone get down to doing some drinking. That was a lot of fun. 
And yeah, we may do this again next Friday. If you guys are into it, let us know. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, yeah, well, guys. We're around. We got nothing better to do. So Yeah. Um, All right. So, yeah, we'll, you know. maybe we'll do that. And if anybody has any songs that they want us to dive in, just let us know and we'll get it rocking. Yeah, we'll get it All right, it guys. And, we'll and, see you next week. Stay, stay safe, everyone. All right? Okay. All right. See you guys. Right. Thanks. Bless, Bye. Everybody.